Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about not knowing to program how to program and having your job. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick, as an experienced software developer, what is the longest you have seen someone else who couldn't program last in their position? I would say the longest, if we now count someone who is not my teammate, I would say about six months, a year-ish, something like that, I think. That's about-ish. Uh, it depends a little bit on what we mean by not being able to program, but because the problem with... Uh, so if you have, a, say, a junior software developer, well, they, they really don't know how to program uh, all that well, so it's sort of hard to to say yes or no there. Uh, usually they can produce something, so it's it's a <laughs> it's a definition problem, right? When, when can you not program? If the program does what it's supposed to be doing, even if it does it in a horrendously bad way or so forth and so forth, it's technically working. That's why I tell people that the difference between good and bad code can be very difficult to define sometimes because it's really down to popular opinion and if the popular opinion is had by people who are really really good then the code quality will be really really good and if the popular opinion is held by, uh, held by people who are incompetent it's gonna be shit. That is the the problem of uh, most I would say. If you have the wrong person for the job, everything is difficult. If you have the right person, everything is easy. And that does not just go for software. It goes for politics, for medicine, for like most things. Uh, stupid people uh, or incompetent people uh, are, is the main cause of uh, it, practically everything that goes bad in the workplace and in society. And here, this is no exception. Uh, so, the person that I saw that could survive the longest without knowing to how to actually code uh, did so in. I actually did a video not that long ago about this exact thing, where someone asked me, "How do you keep your job as an incompetent software developer in a in a company?" And the person who kept has kept this this work for the longest it did exactly this um, the thing I said in that video which is basically that you have to either be in a situation where you cannot be accurately evaluated by someone with a position of authority uh, so that usually ha that's actually very easy in many, in many cases because most people of authority within software development are in ignorant uh, in, you know, in terms of understanding IT they don't know anything about software which is the whole problem when a company re doesn't realize that the people who should be running the company in terms of like at least the IT department has to, they have to have coding skills themselves they have to be for prior software developers or you're just hiring people who are just as ignorant as you are it's just that they might you know what I mean I've had so-called technical engineering managers who, like, they draw the line with that they did some work early on in their career as a junior software developer, yet they can't even start the project. And that's like 15 years ago. So it's like, it's not like they have no real skills, it's just that they can swing some, some words and convince people who know even less that they know something that they don't when they talk to me, uh, the software developers. It's sort of like embarrassing uh, to have a conversation with them, but they get by on charisma. And so when you have such an individual, they can't actually evaluate how good a person is. And that means that an incompetent software developer who doesn't actually know how to code really only has to be in that position where it's hard to evaluate. If they produce, they have to at some point produce something because if nothing ever gets done, that's a whole different problem. The sooner or later people are gonna like, you, but that's the where the copy pasting comes in and like all this sort of stuff where you're sort of just you're coding through copy pasting or similar sorts of things. So. 
I'll leave it to you to decide if that is real coding or not. But the, the other part is that you cannot be in a high stakes situation for too long because the problem with having high stakes projects as an incompetent software developer is, as I also mentioned in that video, that sooner or later someone is going to start questioning whether or not you are good at what you do and then someone is going to be pu pulled in to do an evaluation or like there's going to be a second opinion or something like that. And the person that I worked with uh, had this exact situation. There was a, it was a large corporation uh, that we were working for and uh, the, the way I figured out that this person can't actually code was after they, they, the summer breaks were, were going on and in my region like everybody sort of takes holiday at the same time. Uh, so for those of you who are doing things within Sweden, you should know that uh, during the summer months the basically the entire country shuts down for a few weeks while everybody's at the beach or on in somebody somebody else on somebody else's beach usually and then everything starts uh, starts up again and for those of you us who don't go to the beach uh, we work a little bit uh, during that time and that means that for us software developers that means that we sort of have to help each other out with code reviews and stuff like that. And so I became one of the people who needed to do code reviews for this external third party team. I'm uh, not sure if they're consultants or like where they, what they were, but they weren't working on like in the regular rotation. And they had been working on that system for quite some time and they could not get through a single code review through me. Junior level software developers get through code through my like the like when we do reviews because every single time they submitted something they were like they had no understanding of what they were doing like we were talking about like it, you could I could ask them to fix something and then they would do something that seemed almost arbitrarily completely random and then say it was fixed and then I explained no it's not fixed you just move the variable that's not how you fix this problem you have to do this and this and that okay and then they did something again and like they continued that like they, there was they had one story for the entire summer and they could not get it through code review they could actually not ship the thing during that time and I spoke to my manager and I said this is a, a, like uh, yeah the, I mean the, these guys they can't code they, they, this is not like this is not bad work it is like they don't actually know what they're doing and he said yeah no I know it's, uh, it's shit but uh, it's another department and we have no influence over that department and they're I don't know just allowed to continue I suppose and I kind of go okay uh, great that office politics is once again rearing its ugly head and then I kind of just wiped my hands and I went on with my day and uh, so that is pretty much my story about that. Uh, I don't know how long they care. Uh, maybe they still are continuing because I'm assuming they are somehow getting something out. Because the thing that the story ends with them telling me that, oh, yeah, no, we realized that we don't have to ship this. That's what they told me. I don't know if they actually spoke the truth or they just found another person who came back from like because if it's, this is as, as, as I said if there's somebody else that can do the approval or like say that yeah this seems good and so forth then they don't actually need to ask me or any of the other people working in the company to do the review they can just get someone else to just hit the approve button and then they can continue with their day and so the system is still broken it's still not working but that doesn't matter because the person who's doing the evaluation doesn't actually know how to do anything. So what I want you to take away from this is that the longest I've seen someone who couldn't code is for me it's and I don't think I mean I'm pretty sure there are worse situations than this but uh, for me it's been it's like about six months a year ish something like that before like at least I noticed that they couldn't uh, they couldn't write any software and there's probably worse situations uh, than that uh, where this has happened and as I said it almost always comes down to the same thing they're working on something where the people who are paying them to do the job or like the people who are depending on them are not able to actually know or figure out what good software looks like and this is why I tell people you cannot hire only people who manage software developers who do not know anything about software because if you get the wrong software developers, the, you're actually not going to get anything out of them. 
it's it's ridiculous. You're hiring people who are suppo- who just claim it's like snake oil to the salesmen. They're like they're se- selling you something that you think that you understand, but you don't. So you can just trust them, take them at their word. And as I like to say, it's like talking to a wizard. The magic is hard. What are you gonna say? Well, nothing. You have nothing to say because you don't understand magic. So you need to have someone who is magic. Conve- like who actually knows a bit of magic in order to figure out if this seems to be re- uh, reasonable. The longest someone has survived in my team, or any team that I've been part of where like there have been actual software developers working, is less than six months usually. If, if it's a junior, it's a different social sort of situation, but if we're talking experienced software developers. because And the reason why it takes long is not because you can't figure out that they can't code. That usually is very quick. You can immediately spot them like and just report uh, that this is an issue, we need to fix it. You usually try to be graceful about the thing and give people like some encouragement, because that's the thing, right? Nobody wants to fire people, but we need to get results out of the person, right? So you try to help them, you try to be supportive, but after a while you sort of realize that, yeah, no, this is not going to work out and then comes this next part which is to convince your manager who doesn't know either that this is an issue which is a whole different ballgame because then it comes down to once again the the office politics are they in your favor does your manager believe you do they feel like this is like and are they going to take action or something like that and then you sort of like just report explain hope that your manager does the right thing and go on with your day. And if they don't listen to you, well, then that person is going to stick around until enough people complain about their performance. Have a great day.